I didn't grow up with any brothers, so I've always looked at my bandmates as my brothers. So one of the best parts of making an album was spending a lot of time with them. In late 2021, the American heavy metal band Jag Panzer embarked on their most ambitious project to date, a concept album the band calls The Hallowed. The story is set in a frozen post-apocalyptic world. The plot follows a group of survivors and their animals who are searching for a mythical place of warmth and comfort they can call home. The journey is frightening, dangerous, menacing, and includes encounters with monstrous creatures known as the Jaw and the Swarm. So Mark and I had conversations on the phone for probably about a month about a concept. I think Mark was the first one to come up with the idea of a, an apocalyptic setting and telling a story in that setting. Then I had an epiphany and I, I got very excited and I called Mark up and I said, hey dude, what if we told this story from the perspective of a, of a dog, or a wolf, or an animal? And immediately, that struck a chord, and we started talking more and more about it. And actually, we came up with an entire concept for the record, and then when we forwarded it over to Harry, he took the overall concept, he changed a lot of it, but frankly, he made it way better. I really liked the direction Harry took the story. It reminded me of a classic adventure film like Jason and the Argonauts or Clash of the Titans or any of the Ray Harryhausen films. He really gave me a lot to work with for writing songs. Guitarist Mark Briety began working on the new songs while vocalist Harry Conklin fleshed out the story and developed vocal lines for the new songs. Drummer Rickard Sternquist became the band's musical director as he added drum parts, worked with bassist John Tetley, and arranged and mixed the new material. Rickard delivered completed demos to the entire band while Mark and Harry continued work on new songs. In order for everything to come together, though, a crucial part of the puzzle was still missing. Jag Panzer needed to hire a lead guitarist. I had toured with the band for a number of years and then there was discussion about a new album and I hadn't mentioned to anybody but I was hopeful that uh, I was going to be involved somehow. Phoenix-based musician Ken Rodarte had been the band's touring guitarist since 2018. Ken was very well liked by the members of Jag Panzer but the band had two questions. Number one, was Ken interested in becoming a full-fledged member and two, was he able to contribute to the songwriting on the new album? We'd been touring with Ken for a number of years and we got along really well. I mean, he really was a part of the band, but we didn't know if he wanted to join Jag Panzer. He had never voiced an opinion that he wanted to. Um, and we weren't really sure how or if he could contribute to the songwriting process. Ken was intrigued. And so began the long audition process, which consisted of writing and performing all of the lead guitar parts for the album. He worked with drummer Rickard Sternquist to record his parts, and then Rickard then mixed and delivered them in demo form to the other musicians. The band was thrilled with Ken's contributions, but one band member wanted to hear every single song completed before signing off on Ken as the official lead guitarist. It wasn't me. I started submitting parts for The Hallowed in early February, and that went on for six months. And I did all the solos. It wasn't until the last solo was done that I got the call from Mark. And he said, do you want the spot? And before he was done asking, I, I was already saying yes. With all songs written, a full demo recorded, and a new lead guitarist added to the fold, Jag Panzer began searching for the optimal place to record The Hallowed. 
drummer Rickard Sternquist wanted to take an old school approach to recording drums. He wanted to use his giant 1980s Yamaha kit and record in a big room for a beefy sound. The band ultimately decided to book studio time at Sonic Fish, which is owned by renowned drummer Ken Mary. I really wanted to do things different when it came to drums this time around. And um, so we looked around for a big room. I wanted a big room, a beautiful big room that sounded wonderful. And then I wanted to use my 1980s Yamaha kit that I got when I was 17 years old. And that really made for a magical experience. When uh, we record an album, um, usually we have uh, drums recorded first, and then usually the guitars are second, or they'll have me go in. But uh, this time around, we we did a different, slightly different approach. Uh, the drummer Rickard and I had gone in the studio and did drum and bass live right on the spot. So uh, that was definitely a magical moment for us. Um, and I'm surprised, I wish we kind of would have done this before in the past, but uh, this was actually a really, uh, really awesome uh, situation uh, to uh, go through this time, so. The band then looked to Casey Weaver and Steampunk Audio to record lead guitar. Casey has a fine collection of tube guitar heads and was known for his ability to work well with lead guitarists. I went to the lead guitar sessions at Casey's studio and uh, it was really, really, really exciting because it was loud, it was, the, the energy was palatable and uh, at times I actually felt anxious because it was such a energy filled environment. Vocals and rhythm guitar were recorded at Mark Bridey's Hound House Studios in Colorado. Mark and Harry are old friends since kindergarten. Mark knows how to get the best out of Harry's amazing pipes and aggressive metal approach. The recording process was really fun. Uh, every time there's a mistake, instead of going, oh, you're an a-hole, why'd you do that? It's always like comedic, and we make fun of each other and, and the mistake itself. And uh, it's always cool when you create something, you think, oh, this is BA in the beginning. And then when you actually do it later on, there's little mini things that come out of you, little emotions, little uh, clicks or pops or whatever that make the song more real. So yeah, just recording this thing was, was an awesome experience uh, just because I get to hang out with my bros again. Mark's rhythm guitar parts were recorded loud and feedback and extraneous noise were left on the tracks. It feels live. With tracking complete, the band headed down to Florida to the famed Morris Sound Studios to mix the album. In some downtime, I got talking to Jim and I found out that he worked on the very first Steve Morse solo album called The Introduction. And I shared with him that I had bought that album when it first came out as a teenager, and I saw the supporting tour with him opening for Rush. So being able to sit there and talk with Jim about an album that he worked on while I was working on an album that I was working on was pretty incredible. Jim Morris had previously produced and mixed several Jack Panzer records, and the guys were comfortable working with him. Jim mixed the album Analog on his classic SSL console. 
The band felt like an analog mix was best suited for the hallowed. Everybody wanted a warm feel, not slick or polished. The final step in the production, mastering. The band hired Maor Applebaum to finish the album. Maor Applebaum is known in the music community for his outstanding ear and the band didn't want to settle when it came to mastering The Hallowed. Jag Panzer took an unusual next step and released a comic book for The Hallowed. So the album is told from the perspective of the animals. And Mark came to the band and said, hey, I want to do a comic book. And I want to do it from the perspective of the humans. And what came out of that was an interesting, interesting dichotomy between what the humans experienced during the story and what the animals experienced. Comic books are not cheap. Between the price of hiring an artist and producing the comic, it was a lot of money. But if we did 600 copies and sold them all, we could break even, and that would be good enough. With the audio in place, it was time for photo and video shoots in Colorado. The band hired artist Dusan Markovic for the cover and wanted photographs that would match the intensity of his artwork. So they spent a jam-packed four days being photographed and filmed. The band handpicked three photographers for three different photo sessions. To complete the graphics, the band turned to Travis Smith for the layout. Then it was off to Production Point, a 50,000 square foot Colorado soundstage to film a video for the song Pray. I love Pray. Um, it's really aggressive and uh, it gives you a chance to get your energy out. You know, uh, the word Pray, you can just really just get it all out there. Pray! Panzer wanted to utilize all of their time together, so hours before their flights out of Colorado, they set up a camera on a timer and took a few selfies. It was now time to start promoting the release, and the band wanted to do some very unique things. They produced an audio card and sent it out to journalists all over the world. The band also started an old-fashioned mailing list. They sent postcards to fans around the world. And there's a new series of merchandise for the Hallowed. Most of it is for sale, but some of it's for giveaways at gigs. I started going to concerts as a kid, and I always wanted a memento from the band, maybe catch a guitar pick or take a photo or get an autograph. So we decided when we formed Jag Panzer, we wanted to give people that kind of fan experience. So we actually give away a lot of things at shows and we make ourselves available for photos and autographs. The final step for the Hallowed was the band signing with Atomic Fire Records. The guys are really looking forward to working with Atomic Fire to deliver the Hallowed to metal fans worldwide.